So I just wanted to make a quick video for you guys. In a very strange time. Um, the important part is that the good guys win. We win. Uh, it's just going to be a little bumpy. I mean, we've toppled the cabal. And as that structure comes tumbling down, uh, it's going to be some speed bumps. <laughs> Uh, along the way um, so the most important part is to remember that we have won and you know we we need to be vigilant but there's also celebration in order at at this time because that win is won um, there's still work to do uh, and then it'll get really really fun after we dismantle the uh, things that have been stopping us from enjoying our uh, civil liberties to their fullest, uh, they're gonna shoot in a video. With that hair? Yeah. <gasps> so, after we dismantle those structures and start oh, to be wow. able to uh, get back to the way things used to be, um, you know, just getting back to nature. I mean, uh, and not talking like we're all going to be, you know, pagans and do sacrifices on tree stumps or anything. It's, it's it's crazy because everyone just wants to take everything to the extreme right now. Like, like they want to know the answer. A lot of people feel like these are the end times, and like they don't realize that the good guys have already won and everything's going to be cool um and they're they're freaked out for different reasons uh some people aren't freaked out they're happy they've been waiting their you know whole life for the world to change in some significant way they knew that this was going to happen subconsciously um and you know It is, it is definitely changing for the better and, and very quickly. Um, but as people are looking for... As people are looking inward more, some, t some people, this is like... Maybe even some, for some, obviously, for some, it's the first time they've ever had to really seriously think about, like, hey, uh what's the spiritual aspect of this or you know is the world going to hell in a handbasket or, or what's going on um but here's the key the answer is there is no answer right the answer is there is no answer but that's not true the answer is that all the answers are valid and so i see people giving some pretty bad advice like Jesus hating, you know what I mean? Like, there's one particular guy on YouTube who's, you know, running these supposedly live, but they're actually pre-recorded uh, things about, you know, basically believe in Jesus and die. I think that was one of the captions. That was like one of the quotes, like, believe in Jesus and die. You're going to hell if you believe in Jesus. It's all a trick. People don't know what the heck to do, right? So, here's the thing. Not all people are the same. The answer to life is not the same for each person. That would be boring. Everybody would be the same person. If, the, if my, the, my answers to life were the same as your answers to life, were the same as the next guy's answers to life, we'd all, we'd all be the same. But, and that's not the point. The, the, the point is for variety. And the point is for uh the the point is for us to grow and grow from diversity and not in this you know forced coexist lgbt type type way because that's not that's not even uh that's not even about rights to me at least not in the extreme, um, because they, 
the LGBT community, let's just be honest, want more rights than we have as non-LGBT citizens. And that's just ridiculous. It's, there's no other, you know, good, bad, or other assessing about anybody in there or the LGBT part of it. But, you know what I mean? Like, people are free to, you know, explore their own world, you know, have their own answers to life. Um, but some of that stuff was crazy, especially in New York. So... For one person, the answer to life, right, and their key to savior, literally, could be Jesus. Could be, you know, Jesus Christ. And that's because they can identify from, identify with that character and they can learn from that story. And that's just... That's as simple as it is. I mean, you know, you've got all the different mythologies and um, it's just crazy. I mean, even in, in the, within the different mythologies, there's, you know, several different versions of the same myth. So it, from an intellectual standpoint, it becomes impossible to, to know. It, it becomes impossible to uh, really be saved because being saved means you've learned your lesson in your heart and you're you're not uh you're not afraid of life and um you just you know where you're at you're grounded uh and i'll tell you why that's the most important part because we are creator gods and we create our own reality and Yes, that is that is true on a on a molecular quantum level, um, and you know, it, it's a little deeper than just the secret, you know, just the the law of attraction, and um, you know, you, you have to do some, as they say, shadow work. And that sounds like creepy and it's like, you know, what do I have to do? Have a seance and like, you know, uh, exercise myself for these demons? Is this, you know, Scientology? Do I do, you know, am I possessed by seven, you know, levels of, of uh, alien demonic uh, insanity? Well, yeah, if you believe you are, then the answer is yeah. Um, but look, these are just ways for people to deal with and struggle and overcome the challenges of their mind. And that's what all these things are. That's what all these heroes are. That's what all these myths are. That's what all these religions are. It's a, the, the, the only truth in it is that its purpose is to make you feel the way you should. For, for, for you to understand what you can from life's lessons. And some people can, you know, just read the Bible and be Christian all their life and, you know, get all the, you know, be able to relate, uh, you know, to, to the stories of the Bible, uh, in such a way that it resolves everything in your life. You know what I mean? Like, you know, one person might be able to take any inner turmoil they have, or they might not have a lot. They might, you know, just not have a, a lot of, uh, you know, bullshit to, uh, transcend. And, and, you know, so maybe it's easier for them. Um, you know, it, it goes on and on and on, and you, you gotta, you gotta remember, uh, part of this, and, huh, I don't, I don't have any change in my, my wallet, uh, pocket, it's my wallet, um, I used to, when Dylan, my son, when he was, I don't know, maybe nine years old, uh, we were having a conversation about seeing things from other perspectives, and he kind of was just looking at it only from his point of view. And then yeah, I took out a quarter from my pocket and I held it up, you know, to to the screen. Uh, to the screen, <laughs> I held it up between me and him, and I said, "Hey, Dylan, you know, heads or tails?" And of course. 
he's going to see one side of the coin and I'm going to see the other. He, he just smiled. He knew exactly my point, you know, as soon as I held the coin up and said heads or, or tails, he, he understood what I was saying, that you're going to see it from a different perspective. And, you know, and then I said, you know, and this happens all the time. And I said, you know, if this wasn't a quarter that I could, you know, just flip around and show you the other side, if this was, you know, um, an idea or, or, or something of that nature, or even, you know, a, a non-movable object, we would have to, we could sit there and argue all day, you know, oh, it's heads, no, it's tails, it's heads, it's tails, you know, of course, the quarter I can just flip around, but, you know, with an immovable object, one of us would have to be, you know, uh, not stubborn, and, and go and walk around to the other side, the other person's perspective, and take a look at it from that angle. And then what if what if they still don't see it that way? And he goes, oh, here, you might want to use these. It's the sunglasses, right? So, yeah. There's a, a lot of different ways to look at things. And uh, <laughs> you can... Do yourself a lot of service by letting your mind, uh, you know, grind away on those concepts and 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 think about those uh, myths and and what they might mean and and then and then understand that everybody uh, has a different role to play in life. So I might relate to this mythical character. And, uh, you might relate to that one. And, and, you know, I might play more of a, a Jesus role in my life, a sacrifice, you know, maybe, you know, uh, a dad who has to, you know, in, endure, uh, stuff that he'd rather not put up with, uh, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, the situation is you might not, uh, Get along with uh, the child's son. Thank Abby and I used to have that that issue before. Thankfully, we're on the same page again. Um, but you know, when you don't agree how to raise uh, your child to, together, that can really present some challenges. And so sometimes you have to sacrifice, and you have to. Um, just keep your you know to the grindstone I don't know like you know just uh, swallow your pride sometimes but really what it really is is really just not being selfish you know what I mean like I I know in, through self analyzation that uh, especially when I used to drink I used to problem drink that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I used to, subconsciously, it was kind of an excuse. Like, if uh, there was, like, the beginnings of an argument or something, or something wasn't right, or, you know, Abby said something that, that rubbed me the wrong way, um, subconsciously, I would feed into that argument so that it, it would get to the point where I could be like uh, I'm uh, I you know I need a drink you know what I mean all right whatever uh I'm going cracking a beer I'm going out back or you know I'm uh whatever it is go to the bar walk to the bar um and and we do that in other ways too and not just you know to go have a a beer or you know whatever other Thing we might be relying on, you know, go smoke some weed. Oh, you know, oh man, uh, like herb is good to be enjoyed in very small doses. Um, it, or at least if you're going to do it on a, a regular level, like it, you know, if you're going to do do it daily, you need to just. In my opinion, what's worked for me best is just, uh, 
you know, and we're talking medicinally, of course, because I have my medical marijuana license and everything. So, you know, just a couple puffs in the morning, maybe a couple in the afternoon, and you just need the, the slightest, the slightest little buzz or, 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 or body high, and then you can build on that and you can focus on that. You know, I, ideally, it's it's great if you can be Master Miyagi or, you know, a monk who, who, who is able to just meditate all the time and be high, you know, um, maybe a, a mystic like that guru. But for others, others of us who aren't quite in that zone yet, or I don't know if that zone is exactly where you know my goal would would be um obviously i uh like anyone would i strive to um huh, i'm just thinking about how 1616 that's how long this video is um I, i'm getting you know really off the track but what I wanted to say, uh, most importantly, I, I pretty much said, and that is that there really is no, uh, there's no wrong answer. The, the, you know, you can, you can learn something from, from any religion. And, and uh, oftentimes, you know, people go through having different belief systems and, you know, it's like, oh man, so you were getting it wrong for that many years or whatever? Well, hopefully not. Hope only if you were really suffering through that and just, you know, felt trapped and everything. That's maybe you were getting it wrong. But if you were growing some or, you know, you know, that belief system served you to some degree for a while, that's important because, you know, my... Yeah. One, one example, and I'll use is that it's kind of like the old advanced mathematics thing, right? Like you can't teach you know, algebra to somebody who doesn't know basic, you know, addition and subtraction. Um, so that does apply, but <laughs> only because of the mind's limits. Okay, because you really can jump from zero to awesome in in no time it's just that our minds are so programmed to remember we are you know the our neurons fire and we've got those pathways and everything um and they used to think that that was all formed you know by the time you know in your first six years and and then, you know, maybe 20 years ago, it's probably more like 30 now, with the whole, uh, you know, brain plasticity thing being proven and that you can re grow brain cells and that you actually can rewire your brain. Um, and for people with open minds, it's that's really happens fast. And they did studies where, you know, monks would go with these uh, uh, MRI machines or CRT machines or however they gave them the brain scans and uh, they could see how their you know minds were, were brains were firing on a on a certain level and then they uh, would have people who weren't monks and um, okay I must have pushed the uh, volume button. It was telling me it couldn't zoom in or out in this mode. Um, and the people who weren't monks uh, went in and got the brain scans. And, you know, they, they see how the neurons uh, are firing and the pathways. And those, even though they, th you know, realized that they could be changed through neuroplasticity, they still thought that it was going to take years for for that to to happen and um people have rewired their brains um in very short amount of time uh three months or 
per se, let's just say, um, there's been substantial rewiring. And uh, so that can be you too. I mean, all of this, uh, you, can ha you can have a lifetime of bullshit build up, you know, and, and think like, oh my God, it's going to take me years of therapy to, to um, work this out in my mind or, you know, I'm so fucked up or I'm so broken that, you know, I'm, I'll never be right. And honestly, it can, you can heal that, like, instantly. And the key to it is forgiving yourself, you know what I mean? Realizing that, that it can be healed. You know, it's that very idea it's, it's you believing that you can't do it would prevent you from doing it. And you believing that you can do it, you know, allows you to do it. It's that whole thing about, like, you know, how the mom lifts the, you know, the truck off of their, their kid to save, to save their life. And, you know, the exhibits super strength because she wasn't aware of any limits at that time. Nothing was, you know, nothing was going to stop her. And, of course, most of you are probably already familiar with the fact that, you know, your biggest hurdles in life are the ones you make yourself. And, um, just, just want to reiterate, reiterate one more time that, uh, the key to ascending smoothly and you you will get there you know either way if you're watching this video and you even care about being better or understanding anything you will make it uh on a relatively nice trajectory there's some people who are complete assholes and are you know gonna ride the you know uh the wheels off of, of, of society, and they, that's what's happening right now. They're, they're just trying to squeeze the last bit of, of fear and hope. Uh, well, they, they want the hope out of you, but they're, you know, they, what they want to extract is, is, is the fear. And, you know, anger, and, but the, of course all those things are um, derivatives of fear. Because you're angry, why are you angry? For fear of losing something, or fear that something that happened in the past will, will happen again. So, um, yeah, they, uh, they're, they're trying to squeeze the last little bit out of society, but it's, it's not working too well, and, uh, Everything is, is, is going excellent. We are on the Paradise Ascension timeline. And uh, everything is awesome. Just keep your seatbelts buckled. Um, and remember that uh, you don't have to... You don't have to be settled on your spirituality at all right now you know what I mean it's not like something where you, you have to know the answer in fact it's quite the opposite this whole th transcending experience is something that everyone on on earth is going to go through and uh, you're going to be part of that um, I'm just giving you this information so that you don't freak out in the meantime and so you uh don't start uh, doubting yourself. You know, don't be like, "Oh man, what if this guy's right? What if, what if, what if this really is the end times? And what if what if Jesus comes, you know, back? But it's but it's really Lucifer. But he he looks like an angel because he was he was he was the light. And I, I I'm confused. And don't worry, don't worry. You know, I I have been through that in my life. You know what I mean? That's that's kind of how I used to think at a certain point and um and it comes from knowing so this isn't something that we go oh yeah okay you, you can't like make a chart and be like okay well Jesus on this side and Buddha on that side and you know Krishna over here and you know 
we're not going to name any other uh any any more more gods than those we'll just leave it with the ascended masters um there's just a few of the ascended masters of course but yeah so everything is going to be just fine don't question your faith don't question your spirituality if it's been serving you well and you've been you know feeling right and grounded then that's that's good um remember there's going you're going to feel a lot of this nervous energy you're going to feel um this upgrade okay um which is by the way coming through the sun so get yourself out there as in the in the sunlight you know get yourself some far uvc and uh be good kids i will uh cut this video now i um i'll probably make another one within the next few days because this is this is the time when, when people need this information and uh i hope it serves you well i hope you're feeling great out there and i'll talk to you soon take care everybody